Today, in the Crash Lab studios, we have Jason Levinson, Josh Duggan, and CJ Cam. Jason, welcome. It's great to be here. To good, the studs. It's good to see everybody again. Great to, great to see, to see you, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. This is man, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know what we're going to do is uh, get into some stuff. Uh, you know, demystify some of the vernacular in the space. Um, for a lot of listeners, readers of CEO, maybe followers of this podcast, etc. Some of you don't know what some of these terms mean. I, for sure, when I started off in the capital market side and I made my transition as a geologist into this, I didn't know what this stuff meant. And uh, so Jason uh, is going to talk to us. We're going to talk a little bit about flow through today, charitable flow through mm. and some of these things. This may sound boring. I assure you it's probably not, or at least mostly not. Um, although, you know, it is, it is accounting stuff, uh, which is cool. Trust me, it's, it's important. It's a really important piece of our industry and we should understand how it works. And so, um, without further ado, welcome Jason. Jason, you want to give a bit of an intro on yourself? Uh, what's your background, man? Yeah, sure. So, uh, I run a investment, uh, firm here in downtown Toronto, Castlewood Capital Corporation, and, uh, we help companies raise venture capital and provide corporate advisory services to them. And, um, yeah, we're one of the few independents on the street, um, and we're proud to be independent and we look for good ideas that we think have terminal value. You're from Montreal? From Montreal. Uh, moved here 10 years ago. Uh, I've been working for asset managers for most of that time in the uh, resource space. And Who'd you work with? Um, I worked for Jerry Brocklesby. I worked for Frank Holmes. And uh, that was a great school of, uh, of junior mining. Um, you know, you, you got to touch things and, and, and do things you wouldn't, you know, be able to do at bigger firms. And I was able to learn a lot and had some... Some some really really good, um, you know, people show me the way. And primarily, I mean, you were you're always a, 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 a good hustler. You know, I, you got to respect a good hustle, but you're always a good hustler in terms of raising capital for these guys and these funds. For sure. So you know, I was I was good at raising the capital, and uh, these you know these individuals were were nice enough to show me what to look for when they were making investments with the capital I was raising. And sure. uh, that's when I was able to become more dangerous and, and start choosing the deals I was raising money for and um, and uh, put high net worth investors into those deals as well as institutions. So now you've broken off on your own. You've gone rogue. Jason's a rogue uh, elephant. I'm not you got rogue. A, oh, you, got not a, you got rogue. a business partner. I'm not rogue. I'm <laughs> I'm uh, regulated by the OSC. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, we're providing much needed venture capital in, in – um, in, in in times where there isn't much venture capital out there and we're proud to be supporting good ideas during tough times. How, how did you get into the, the resource space? Because not a lot of young kids come into our sector. Yeah, so, you know, I found myself working at TD Asset Management and obviously the products at TD Asset Management were kind of dry, like the TD Monthly Income Fund. And I was looking for, uh, to get behind investments that were a little bit more niche. Um, and obviously being in Toronto, uh, being the finance capital for mining, um, I naturally found uh, Jerry Brocklesby, and I was fortunate enough that he was able to show me the way. Where does Jerry? Jerry runs Marquest, right? So Jerry's the founder of Marquest. He is now uh, has his own EMD as well called Stonegate Securities, and mm -hmm. um, we collaborate together on a lot of uh, deals that require venture capital. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, um, we're talking about flow through side of the business, flow through funds. Actually, in particular, what Jason's talking about right now with Jerry Brocklesby and Marquest. Um, you know, in the Canadian landscape, we have an you know a uh, a tax offset. Uh, it's kind of like a charitable donation where you can kind of offset your capital gains, etc. Uh, you're probably going to do a way better job explaining yeah. this than me, but I'm uh, you know. It's an instrument and it, it amounts to a lot of the capital that you see specifically in the small cap space, a lot of junior explorers, and it's unique to Canada. So if you're in the U.S., you have a U.S. deal, um, this doesn't apply to you. You can't spend flow through money. But in Canada, we can. So why don't we walk through a little sure. bit of that? We'll so so obviously in Canada, as, as many of the listeners already know, this is a well-endowed country in terms of mineral resources. And the government uh, was looking for ways to incentivize investors to take a lot of risk because ex exploration is a lot of risk like super risk you know I, I don't know what the statistic is but is it like one in a hundred projects actually end up becoming a mine so you know it's worse than that dude it's like one in a thousand so so there you yeah. go so the risk is extremely high when you're when you're laying out hard-earned capital and investing that into junior mining place so in the early 80s they came up with a program uh, in conjunction with cra that allowed you to get a tax deduction for every dollar you invested into one of these 
uh, junior companies. It could actually be private or public, but most people invest in the public companies because there's more liquidity. And effectively, it allows uh, junior mining companies to raise capital, give tax deductions to the investors, and also raise money at a premium. So it's a it's been a it's, it's been a great uh, tax program over the last uh, forty years for Canada because you know it's 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 led to some great discoveries and uh, and there's not that many ways in Canada to get a tax deduction. Frankly, you can contribute to your RSP, you can donate to charity, or you can buy flow through. Or your um, TFSA. Well, you don't get a tax deduction with your TFSA, but your gains are sheltered in your TFSA. So it you know there's, if if you're in the highest tax bracket here in Canada, there's very few ways to um, to not pay tax, frankly. So, you know, once you've maxed out your RSP and you've donated a little bit to charity, um, you want to get your taxable income down and, and, and flow through is a great way to do it. Mm. Now, now with, with flow through, I guess there's some, I want to say dogma surrounding companies taking in flow through money and, and, you know, it's great because you have more money to drill with, but at the same time you're faced with an issue that, you know, there's likely going to be an in increased amount of sale pressure, uh, on your stock from the flow through participants looking to get off of it. What motivates that? So, so let, let's start from the beginning. So the way up, the way flow through works today, it varies province per province. But if you're investing in a critical minerals flow through, which is pretty much anything that's not gold or silver. So if you're looking for copper, cobalt, nickel, lithium, um, you get 135% tax deduction for every dollar you invest in year one. So if you invest a dollar in a investment issuer that's issuing flow through paper, you get a dollar 35 that you can now deduct from your taxable income. So this is a pretty good tax program because that's a pretty big upfront tax deduction. Um, but when you do decide to sell the security, your ACB, which is average cost base, is now zero. So it is a bit, it is a bit of a tax deferral strategy. But if 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 you buy the one-off What's issuer, ACB? ACB. Is your average cost base. So That's what it costed you. This, yeah. So the government is assuming you paid zero for it, even though you didn't pay zero for it. But that's a part of the whole uh, tax program with flow through is that you know, you can't have your cake and necessarily eat it too. Um, if you paid a dollar for it, um, you know, you can't say you paid a dollar for it and get the tax deduction. So you get an ACB of zero. Yep. And when it comes time to selling the flow through share that you bought from the investment issuer, you have to pay capital gains tax, assuming you paid nothing for it. What if you turn around and take that money and buy another flow through? So that's what ends up generally happening is people invest in a flow through, uh, private placement. Um, they hold it for four months and a day. And then, um, if they like the story, they can hang on. Or if they have a big win or they don't like the story anymore, they could sell. But when they sell, they have a capital gains tax to pay. And they can offset that capital gains Just tax by buying another flow through deal, which offsets the capital gains tax you paid from the previous flow through deal. And is that a, like, would that be a hundred percent wash if you can keep it rolling it like that? Um, pretty close. Um, which is what a lot of investors do. Um, but what's become popular in the Canadian landscape is charity flow through, which is a lot of investors want the tax deduction without the um, exposure to the exploration play. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll buy a flow through share and get the first tax deduction. And then once they get the flow through share, they'll then donate the flow through share to charity and get a second tax deduction and then wipe their hands of the capital gains tax crazy hmm. now what happens what's happening down the pipe with this because you were saying so i think obviously you know the government's always looking for loopholes that canadians are taking advantage of right. so the way it works when you go to your accountant come tax time is you know you hand in your slip for how much income you made you show them all the capital gains tax you made you show them all the charities you donated to you show them your rsp contribution and then he, you know, there's the ordinary. What's for tax, her, man? What's tax, it, what if it's a her? Calculation. Or if it's a her? Sorry, get I get woke. Bullied. Get woke, bro. It, it can this also be a, a they. Podcast. Hey, it can also be a <laughs> they. It's a they them. It can also be a they them. Okay, so, sorry. So, Continue. So then, you know, your accountant does his ordinary income tax calculation when he comes to a number, but he also does a parallel calculation with all those numbers you just provided him with, which is called the alternative minimum tax, which is stands for AMT, and and the story with that is. He does. He takes all the slips you just provided him, and he does a separate calculation based on a separate formula called AMT. And based on whichever number comes out to be higher, 
that's what you pay tax on at the CRA. So traditionally, AMT, in that formula, there was nothing that mentioned charitable donations of securities to charitable donations. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So taking your flow through shares and donating them to charity. Well, it's not just flow through shares. It's any public securities and donating it. Okay, fair, fair to, enough. To, yeah. to charity. So in this case, what they've done is they now say, as a part of the AMT calculation, that any public traded securities that get donated to charity, there's now a capital gains tax of 30% on it, assuming you have capital gains tax. And because your ACB is zero on the flow through, that leaves you exposed to a very big capital gains tax with the new AMT rules because you're getting taxed 30% on on an investment where you have an ACB of zero. So does this kill charitable flow through? I don't think it necessarily kills charitable flow through, but I think investors and, and high net worth investors here in Canada are going to be less likely to stroke the same size checks they're currently stroking for it. Personally, obviously, the, the government of Canada isn't pleased that the amount of money that was being raised in the space, and they saw that as an opportunity to close a loophole. Um, but there's a bit of a misconception that it affects the whole flow through space. Hmm. It only affects the charity flow through space, the traditional flow through space, the tax deductions remain the same. And, mm. uh, and it's so only that compounded thing where you have the chair, the standard flow through, let's say where you've got your deduction, as you mentioned before, the 135 cent, if it's a critical, mm -hmm. critical mineral, and then you get this tax deduction. And then if you take the shares, the flow through shares, the shares that you just bought, right. With that money, that's, floating around as a deferred tax, basically. Mm -hmm. And then you went and contributed that to what used to happen is you'd be able to take that and and throw that into charitable. And, and, into and, and donate your, your, your flow through shares that are now common shares to charity. But right. now because they said all, you know, publicly traded listed company shares, any of those that they could donate to charity now are susceptible to capital gains tax at a 30% rate. Shit. And because yeah. your ACB is zero when you buy a flow through share, um, that leaves you pretty exposed. So when does this come into f to effect? So so this is the proposed. This was in the latest Liberal proposed budget, and you can expect this to come into effect in 2024. So I expect a flurry of charity flow through deals between now and the end of the year. Right, right. people rushing yeah. to take advantage of the current Correct. situation. Correct. So what does that mean for the market? Do you see? Does that mean that we're going to see people That's taking? taking gains that they've had other been wise been deferring for a long time, like a big win and saying, I got to hurry up and get off my paper, no, I think I th take my gain so that no, I, I can offset it. I, you'll see a flurry of that. If, because, but not everybody that buys flow through is donating it necessarily to charity. Some people are along the story they're invested in and, 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 and want to see it work out and, and then hopefully mm -hmm. get bought by a major or, or be put into production. But there are a lot of people that buy flow through to then donate it to charity and, yeah, you're going to see those people hitting the bid probably, you know, between now between now and the end of the year. You so know? you're going to see a lot of flow through money coming in at the end of the year, but you may see some pressure on the stocks Correct. between now more, and more, then. And yeah, I also way think I think way you're gonna, more pressure. Yeah. I think we're also going to see a flurry of deals between now Fuck. and the end of the year. Yeah, so you're gonna, because everyone can raise. Yeah. You know, the, the another benefit the charity flow through uh, as it stands today is you could raise money at a huge premium because the way charity flow through works is after you donate your shares to to your flow through shares to charity, there's then a back end buyer that's there. And it's usually it. Right. A, and, and that way, you know, you know, you, usually when we do a charity flow through, I'll explain it my way too. When we do a charitable flow deal, let's say it's like newfound gold raising charitable flow through for that province of Newfoundland, we'll get a quote from like a pear tree or like an Oberon or somebody like that. And they'll say, we'll give you 1.4 or 1.5 to the back end price to the back end price. And then, and then you basically, you can price your back end at a slight discount to your market. And then you can close at a premium, a huge premium, like 50% premium and the benefit to on that, the top end and you get way more money. And then you're placing the back end with like your Eric Sprots or your, Correct. you know, your supportive. The benefit you know, to that people. is you get investors that come into your story at a slight discount to the market. And the idea there is they're supposed to have a good experience and uh, there won't be pressure on the stock after four months and a day because these are investors that are hopefully long. So, well, do you think that will be upset by this whole? Well, the nothing changes for the back end buyers, but unfortunately the part of the mousetrap that gets affected by this new rule of donating publicly traded securities to, to, to charity is now there's a taxable event as opposed to before when there wasn't. So, you know, charity flow through is, will be lucrative, but just not as lucrative as it once was.
Hmm. That really hurts. So I think yeah. going forward in 2024, you'll have more people looking at alternative <laughs> options in the flow through space, like maybe going back to the traditional flow through funds or maybe buying a basket themselves of flow through issuers. Um, you know, you know, people were counting on effectively invest when it came to charity flow through investing $5, but getting $10 worth of tax deductions because they get two tax deductions when they bought the flow through and when they donate to charity. Maybe actually what happens is you have people topping up, you know, normally they would have done $5 of flow through, but maybe they'll do $10 of traditional flow sure. to sort of get that, to get that same tax break. Well, one of the unique, in, one of the unique offerings that we had is Canadian kind of venture listed companies and specifically operating in Canada was that we had the benefit of going out and raising $5 million. And once you go out and round up $5 million with the checks, you can go to a flow through fund and say, I've got 5 million rounded up and they go, here's seven and a half and they give you seven and a half. And so you're, you're the guys that you rounded up still only paid the five because mm -hmm. they're covering the back end. And you get this like X, you got now you got seven and a half to spend on your drills instead of five. Um, so, but traditional flow through is only a 10% premium by and large. Well, it depends on what kind of market environment we're in right now in the market. I'm seeing flow through deals that are priced at almost at the, you know, at the price they're trading at today. And right. Like that's, barely. That's, that's yeah, the yeah. state of affairs at, we're at in flow, where you yeah. have to incentivize people to buy your stock by getting a tax deduction at the price it's currently trading at. Where was it at though, Jason? When, well, it, was it there varies. a time when there was, was there a time when it was like, you know, 30% premium or 20? Well, I would say during COVID when, uh, when our space caught, caught some. Yeah. We had a little mini bull run. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. mini bull. You were yeah. probably paying the anywhere, minimum or whatever. You, were, you, you know, depending it. what province the project was in, you were probably paying anywhere from 15 to 20% at the time. Wow. But now okay. just to incentivize investors to walk in the front door, yeah, buy a, you know, buy a flow through share at, at the price we're currently trading at and here's 130% tax deduction or 135 for walking in the door. So would you say um, individuals, uh, individuals that invest in flow through are in it more for investing into the story versus an individual going through the LP route, like a, like a flow through fund, they just want the tax deduction and they don't care about well, anything else. As, as, as a broker on the street, when I'm talking to investors about investing in flow through, yeah. if you don't, if you're not a sophisticated investor, when it comes to junior mining, I recommend that you always go the, the, the basket route of flow through issuers, which is the traditional flow through fund route, because you want, you'll, you'll get the same tax deduction, but your, your risk will be mitigated by owning a basket of them. But if you're someone that understands the space well and wants to take a real gamble, you know, I'll tell you to, you know, I'll recommend an issuer to you that I think, uh, that I think has some torque to the upside while you get the tax deduction. Mm. Now, um, obviously this won't apply to 99.9% .9 of the listeners of this podcast, but let's say there is high net worth Canadian investors out there that are looking for tax deferrals, you know, that, that have listened to this and said, shit, you know, I, now I finally understand flow through, hopefully let me a little bit better. Um, I want to look into this a little bit more. Um, what are some tools people can use to do? Like, is there like an online tech calculator? Yeah. Or so like most of the use? traditional flow through funds have a website online and a lot of them over the years have added a tax calculator where you input how much you want to invest, what province you're in. Is there one that you like to use? Yeah. I think Terra funds, uh, uses a great, uh, uh put together a great Terra tax funds. calculator. Steph, can you pull up Terra, Terra funds.ca? Yeah. And, and this fund's run by Brad Bay at Cypress and he does a fabulous job. Um, at uh, at at allocating the flow through deals for 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 his investors at Good. Tira. and so this is a very uh, user friendly calculator where you you know you put in the amount of income you made in the year you're donating, and uh, you put in the amount of your investment, and uh, it actually it, it's pretty cool because it allows you to also input any capital losses you might have because you know we highlighted that your average cost base would be zero, um, you know. You, and if you do decide to sell in the same year that you bought, you know, you obviously have some capital gains tax to pay and you can use any capital losses to, to offset your capital gains. You'd be, you'd be incurring from, uh, from selling the flow through. When you invest, uh, via the fund route though, you don't have any, <laughs> uh, control in if you want to hold on to the underlying. You, so you have no control on that, but traditionally, uh, a majority of these funds have a mutual fund that it rolls over into on a tax deferred basis. So you get to, as the investor, get to decide when it's time to, 
to to sell and pay the capital gains tax. You could almost defer the tax indefinitely if you just stayed in the rollover fund. But generally, a lot of the rollover funds out there, um, they don't perform very well. They don't perform very well. And a lot of the uh, flow through fund uh, mm. providers, um, you know, to, to run, you know, the, the costs of having a mutual fund platform are very expensive. And a lot of the flow through fund providers don't have um, enough scale to to sort of subsidize the cost of having a a, a of yeah. Uh, yeah. a mutual fund Thanks. shelf. So the MERs can also be quite high sometimes. Do these funds even care about what they're putting their money into? Or do uh, they just want the tax savings? Um, I personally they, don't think they give a shit. Uh, he's going to say no because he sells it. But Well, yeah. based on my experience, um, a lot of them take a lot of prudence and care in terms of what they're putting their investors into. Um, because, you know, ultimately they're ranked by their performance. If somebody decides they want to buy a flow-through fund this year, they're going to look at all the funds performance and track record and they obviously want to have a better track record than the than their competitor sure that's fair enough but do you think that that's more of like uh do you think they're screening the technical merits of the project or you know the actual discovery potential let's say of the opportunity or do you think they're more screening on a like a liquidity basis and a market cap basis i would i would a, say you know, i would say like some of those. i would say for starters they care and the second thing i would also say is that the two biggest things that are important to them is 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 merit, te- you know, te- right. te- technical merit, yeah. and the second thing is liquidity, and you know, in years like twenty twenty three, where the flow through raises haven't been that good, you know, they have, they they don't have to really go downstream and invest in smaller cap issuers that have lesser liquidity. They can buy the more liquid deals like uh, two door gold, for example, or 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 big issuers where. You know they can get in, get their tax deduction, and you know, the project has merit, and then they can also get it out pretty easily. But in, in it bo- is fair to say, though, it is fair to say. Sorry to interrupt, but it is fair to say that like a lot of the shittier companies out there in the space, let's say, there's not exactly a mountain of flow through being thrown at them. No, like yeah, they're having a hard right. time raising it, and it's not it's not super easy. To so raise the bet in 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 sort of crappy markets like we are in today, which I find to be a buying opportunity, but crappy markets like we're in today. The, the issuer, the small, the sub $20 million market cap uh, flow through issuers, their best chance of getting money are between October till right before Christmas because the flow through funds now know how much money they have to allocate. A lot of the big liquid deals are now out of the market and they have mm. to go downstream to make sure they spend the money before the end of the year. Now, I will say this quickly. I mean, if you're playing around with this tax calculator with Terra funds, and you're, you know, somewhat interested in this whole space um, and talking with Jason here. If you can, uh, I mean, if you've maxed out your RSP and you've maxed out. And you've donated to charity. And you've donated to charity, then chances are you're not taking your fucking tax advice from us. So, <laughs> so please, please do not take your tax advice from us. Go talk to your accountant, which you likely have if you qualify for any of these things. And uh, yeah, and don't use us. We have. We're just trying to. We're just trying to demystify the, it. Yeah, the yeah. flow through space for a lot of the folks that. Uh, yeah, the financial dictionary of flow through and what this means. For sure. I mean, it's pr- really profound though, of how this trickles into what we could look at, um, sort of as market pundits on, you know, crystal ball readers on where this market's going, perhaps, and how it's going to affect and trickle down into the junior side of the space and. So it's really fascinating today to have you come in and talk about that because I didn't know about this whole, you know, change up on the charitable flow side. And, you know, I, I experienced it firsthand. I mean, all, oftentimes with investments that we make or or even then the companies I've been invo- involved with closely, like the, the real tremendous benefit involved there. And to know that that's sort of going the way of the door to board possibly by next year and that you may have a rush for the door in names you may have this fluster of uh of flow through money getting thrown in just to kind of get it done before the end sort of so thing you it's would pretty see fascinating a lot of charity flow through raised and then like the donation right away it's almost simultaneous yeah. so you'll see like on the cap table if it's eric sprott good eric sprott's charity bad because you know well I, I i disagree mm. i you know i don't i don't know eric personally but I, I do know that he controls his 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 charity. The way I interpret it, it's just the right hand moving money over to the left hand. Mm. Um, but um, you know, I can't speak to what his intentions are once it goes to his charity. But well, then that was just an example because yeah. he's a big guy that everyone knows for sure. 
I'm not speculating on what he does. Yeah. But people could hypothetically sell sell a big win, let's say, crystallize a big win mm -hmm. this year and turn that over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like Thank I said, the, the new AMT rules vis-a-vis -vis the uh, capital gains tax on the donation of securities to charities only looks like it'll take into effect in 2024. So, you know, it's the, uh, you know, it'll be the same, you know, nothing's changing until the new year effect. Yeah. But would you really be able to, even if you wanted to act on it now, would you really be able to take your win, buy your flow through, and then donate your flow through to charity this year? Yeah, nothing changes until 2024. So that whole flow can happen. That would Correct. happen consecutively and in one fall swoop. This concept of charitable Fast. flow, like, I don't remember it being as popular, let's say, like, 10 years ago. Right? So I think, I, think, I think what sort of happened was, yeah. you know, Pear Tree and Oberon and, and, and the big boys in the space... Um, only focused on the bigger deals. Yeah. Um, but now they have more resources because they've had so many good years and, you know, they have more employees and they're going downstream. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, because obviously the, 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 the smaller issuers would like to, always wanted to participate in this mousetrap. And uh, now these, you know, sort of flow through charity flow through providers now have the resources to provide the same services to smaller issuers. Now, I think this is super fascinating topic. And uh, I want to take it to an even more obscure and possibly boring place for all those listening that think that this isn't interesting, which I think actually most will. Um, Quebec. Let's talk about Quebec. Why is Quebec different? What's super flow through? What's like, what, how can we bundle Quebec differently? Why, why, why do we look at it differently this way? The main difference, well, I used to be in Canada before there was critical metal, critical metals flow through. There was just traditional flow through and the tax deduction up front in year one on that would be roughly a hundred percent. Okay. And so in Quebec, the upfront tax deduction was always around 130, 135%. So that's why it was, it was, it was so good flow. because and that's what we call it. Super flow. Well, actually, actually, it, actually, it was just really Quebec normal flow through. Correct. But another element that Quebec had that the rest of Canada didn't have in their uh, flow through, uh, paper was that you were exonerated on capital gains tax when you sold. Uh, so if you had an ACB of zero, didn't really matter because you were exonerated on the capital gains tax when you sold. So literally everybody and their mother is incentivized yeah. to, you know, to, in Quebec to buy flow through Incredible. because you buy the flow through, you get the upfront tax deduction. And then when you sell it, there's no capital gains tax. Wow. Hmm. I'm moving to Quebec. Is it still like that? So it only works for Quebec investors investing directly in Quebec projects. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. So that's the last cog of the wheel. So is that why we see Quebec deals getting so much more money from- uh... For sure. Because a lot of investors don't have to remain long-term to defer the capital gains tax. Exactly. They can, they can sort of be pretty nimble and get tax deductions. And when their stock's free trading, they can they can get out and buy another one and get another tax deduction. Now, are they getting an even bigger premium right now on top of that with the lithium and critical metals? Quebec thing? always gets gets a bigger premium than the rest of Canada, but um, obviously it's, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are right now in the. No, but on their conventional space, flow, like let's say Quebec traditionally had one thirty five. Yeah, it was closer. To, it was it was closer in, in good days. In good, you know, when the market was a little better than it is today, you were able to get about a thirty percent premium. Right. Yeah. And so, and so now, and so now with the critical metals and stuff, is that like, is it 160 now? Like, is it an extra bump on top of the Yeah. Bump? So, so, so you would get an extra bump. Um, it varies deal per not, deal. Not on pricing, but actual tax savings. Yeah. On tax savings. Yeah. Like, so, so, so in Ontario now, if, if, if it's a critical metal or an energy metal or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right. As long as it's not gold and silver. Like, so mm -hmm. if she's like, you know, copper, nickel, yeah. zinc, lithium, or not zinc probably, but uh, lithium, uh, that sort of stuff, cobalt. Uh, so in Ontario, you were saying that it got, it went from like being a hundred percent deduction mm -hmm. to now it's like 135% reduction or 130% reduction yeah, so in Quebec, because it's a critical mineral. In Quebec, I think, I believe it's closer to 150%, but make sure to check with your local tax expert. Okay. So Quebec yeah. may be even wow. still... Mm -hmm. One superior yeah. to yeah, one fifty plus the uh, so don't ask yourself why they're finding all these goddamn games. pegmatites in James Bay because <laughs> yeah. they got free money up there. And it's actually the the whole Patriot Battery Metal phenomenon. Uh, that's a great charity flow through example because 
a lot of the buying for Patriot Battery Metals has come from Australia. So you have all these back-end buyers lined up in Australia. So you can almost raise as much charity flow through up front as, as, as their heart desires. Right. And they can name whatever premium yeah. they want. They can be like, well, geez, I bet you they're getting a huge, I don't know what it would be, but I bet you it's done at like the top end, not the back end, but yeah. the, the, yeah, the, front the front end, end yeah. I guess. Like yeah. the front end must be done at a huge premium right now. For sure. Lithium, Quebec, like. But you know, wow. you know, the thing is, if, do we know what that is? Is that even look upable? Is that even searchable? Yeah, I think so. You just see what like the, the front end. Yeah, yeah right? I guess it would be. Yeah. You know, the thing is, gentlemen, if, if we're moving towards this bipolar world, where, you know, it's sort of China and Russia versus, you know, the, you know sort of the North American. Called the East versus the, the West. The East versus the West. You know, it hasn't been a focus in, in Canada or U United States mineral exploration for the longest times. And you have Russia and China sort of colonizing the world and Africa and Latin America and and sort of getting their hands on, on uh, gold deposits, copper deposits, sort of whatever they can get their hands on. And this is an incentive for us to sort of keep pace with them here at home. You know, there hasn't been that many discoveries in Canada over the last couple of years because there hasn't been that much financing available. And, you know, flow through is one of the ways where, you know, we could sort of compete with China and Russia because they have different standards when they move into these countries. They almost colonize them. Here in Canada, we have human rights laws. But, you know, the, the way to compete with, uh, you know, the arms race to get as, you know, to get as many medals of the future under our belt as possible, flow through is a great incentive to sort of participate in that for the average person at home. So, I mean, not to make it political, but do you think this is a big, do you think this is a big mistake for them to be closing up this loophole? Um, you know, I, I don't have an opinion on it, uh, admittingly. Um, it's just, you know, the rules are the rules. Um, there's obviously going to be less money coming into the space. Um, but it also will require people to potentially invest more in traditional flow through because, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, to get a $10 tax deduction, they only had to in invest $5 because by the time they, you know, they invested in the flow through and donated that flow through to charity, they got $10 worth of tax deduction. So, you know, maybe actually we see the same amount of flow through dollars come into the space or more because people will compensate um, for no more charity flow through when, and buy more traditional flow through. Oh, but so maybe, rather than, yeah. okay, got it. But maybe it, it's not as big as we think it is because we're talking about 99.9% .9 of the people would benefit from flow through. But like what percentage of that point one benefit from charitable flow through? These are like the ultra, ultra whales. It's really right? people yeah. that, that, that earn more than $300,000 a year or more. Yeah. The people that earn two fifty, if you live in Toronto, it's you know, it's even hard to survive on two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars a year. So you don't have too much money left over. But you know this whole here here you'd think that ever everybody anybody ever utter those words? Yeah, I know. You know, pretty hard to live off of two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, no. It's, You're uh, right though; it's expensive. Toronto's here. an expensive place, and Vancouver's an expensive place, and so you know, th th this program has really become for the ultra high net worth. Mm -hmm. So I just took a look at Patriot Battery Metals last charity flow through in March. They did 50 million, about 2.1 or 2.2 million common shares at 22.57 a share, up 90 percent. Uh, so 90 percent premium from the two days trading before. So they got a one a one nine. What, sorry. Yeah. Explain? So they, they raised 50 million dollars at 22.57 a share, which was a 90 percent premium to the last closing what? price two days before. What do you mean? So they got 1.9. Does that That's, make sense? Yeah. 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 1.9. 90%. That's not Jesus. bad, Jesus. Eh? Yeah, but that's that's kind of like Quebec, though. That was like the on the charitable flow side. It was always very high, but that's still very high. That's, you know, that's a huge, that's a huge premium. Well, I, I think, you know. Double the money. I mean, you go to raise 10, you end up coming home with 20. Yeah, and they're at 17. And now, you only so. had to dilute your company by 10. So it's a win, win, win. Yeah, it's everybody wins. But, you know, I think it's good news for the smaller issuers. Because I think they they'll have a chance now at seeing more traditional flow through come their way, like there are fabulous mm. opportunities right now in the flow through space, sub twenty million market cap, where you know you have mineralization near surface, and you know it's hard to raise money, and the flow through dollars aren't sort of coming your way because they're all going to the larger cap charity flow through deals. So, you know the the down cap flow through issuers uh, might get some more visibility if there's more traditional flow through dollars coming into the space. Huh. We'll see what happens next year then. It'll be interesting to see. But do you think um, there's always 
when a new product is put out and um, not a lot of people know about it, but then all of a sudden the larger institutions can start exploiting maybe loopholes in it and stuff. Have you looked at life finance things at all? And do you see... At, at, at Castlewood, we've never participated in a life financing, yeah. but I will point out a trend that I've noticed in which... Shit on it, Jay. Shit no, on no, it, no, no, no. Go for it. <laughs> no. Go no, for never it. Never say never, because then next week I'll have a life financing. <laughs> <laughs> never he'll say be, never. He'll be right back in the crash But, the, but the, the, you know, the, the, the trend is not your friend on uh, life financing. If, if you look at the issue price of the deals and then compare it to where they currently trade, yeah. it's, not so, it's not so great. I think a lot of folks use it for uh, for uh, as a warrant stripping exercise mm. because a lot of these life deals, it's free trading on day one, plus they come with a warrant. Yeah. So you, you have the ability to, if you can get out nimbly and not much of a loss or a small gain, you could just ride the warrant and have exposure to well, that. Well, what's worse than having a big uh, Marquest and they're blowing out their paper four months plus one day or getting blown out day one? Like, isn't it the same thing? Like, Wouldn't you rather the guys well, you want to get I, out? I, 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 I will say a lot of the flow-through funds do keep in touch with the issuers and, um, and, and management, and management very often looks to find crosses because they know flow-through paper will eventually come mm. at them, and they'll well, try to cross out the big blocks. Okay, that, that is true. You yeah. could do a block cross with flow-through, but you couldn't do it with retail Yeah, if they were just weren't clipping you on life, on life sciences. Yeah, that makes or sense. Life, well, not life sciences, life deals. Yeah. Correct. So- yeah, everything has its pros and cons, but retail investors need to be aware of all these variables. And it's not like there's a manual where you could where you could read up on on all these things. You Can know, we explain the life deal for a second? Sorry, CJ, do you want to give that a go? Well, or Jay, like uh, CJ, life deal. What what the hell is life? Just I mean, it's just for the benefit of whoever's yeah. listening. So I I, I, I know it very is, top level. It's just um, a new type of financing where the investor does not have to be accredited, and it doesn't come with a four months. Four month plus one day hold. So there's no hold. It's free trading right away. Correct. And you don't have to have, be an accredited investor to buy it. Anybody anywhere can Anyone buy it. Anyone can buy in yeah. Canada. The positive part about it is they're democratizing private placements. Mm -hmm. Which were exclusively reserved for Which, like the very wealthy and or well, you had to be a, either a permitted investor or an accredited investor. And there's different rules that qualify you for those things. And then you have to have a broker and you have to have... And then you got to, you know, sort of show indication and then hopefully get filled, you know. But the the life, the positive from the life financing is it allows you to participate in, in placements that you traditionally have not been able to participate in if you're not an accredited investor. And get things like a warrant. Correct. You know. And, and it's so funny how the way the rules have worked over the years where, you know, you, you didn't meet the requirement to participate in the placement, but you met the requirement to go buy it on the board, you know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like a complete And your risk is like uh, a little bit more mitigated because you get a warrant too on top of it. Sure. So well, like, it's just juicier. It was the, yeah. the rules sort of lean towards the rich. Yeah. The rich get richer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Life deals have not been marketed well. They're not, it's not been pitched as the democratization of, of investing or the floodgates are now open to all of us. I think people are still very confused. Even I see messages all the time online where people don't really understand understand that anyone could just write a check and hop into the deal they still think there's like these large minimum requirements red they tape. still think you need to have you know a lot of brokerage red tape you know they they don't really get it so i, I know we're going to have some people from the exchange maybe some ceos who have gone through that i get the issues with you know a lot of stock against you from day one i still think personally it's i'd rather have it against me and out of the way quicker than four months in a day of like yeah. a deadline knowing your you know cancer uh you know his, uh, diagnosis is four months away versus dealing with it now so it's 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 interesting to see, but uh, I don't. There's still a lot of miscommunication and uncertainty out there for people who aren't hopping in these deals. Oh, well, but you know, That's I crazy. would I would say one of the the cons, I guess, you know, to the life deals is since you have a lot of retail participating, you don't know where your stock necessarily is. And as the CEO of these juniors, I'm sure Denny, as you know, mm. um, yeah, it's you, eleven o'clock. Do you know where you your like children to know are? Where your stock, you I, know, I agree with that. You know, you, you really want to know where your stock is at all times, right? Yeah, at least at least a lot of it. I mean, there's been, I would actually say Earth Labs. We know a good chunk of Earth Labs stock, but we're we got a lot distributed into retail, like more more than I probably would like. But it is what it is. Um. So so yeah, like you know, the state of the flow through market, uh, is you know, there's there's opportunities to be had. Um, you know, you have a lot of sub ten million dollar market caps now out there. And if you participate in a flow through 
it's like you're getting in at a, at like a five million dollar market cap. Mm-hmm. So um, you know that's the opportunity right now in this in the space is you're buy, you get to buy things at discounted prices and you get an even bigger discount because you participate in the in the flow through and get the tax deduction up front. Hmm. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what these life deals, if this is good or bad, or if this is going to turn out to be a flow through thing, or if this is just going to wash up onto the shores of, you know, failed ideas because of the fundamental flaw of having the free trading paper, making everyone a short fund instead of just, I don't even, you know, I like, have you ever put money into a flow through before? Never. I, I, I've never, I've never, that's what I was saying to Jay before we did this. I was like, you know, it's so funny. I've taken in flow through money. I've raised charitable flow through money. I understand the bottomless well to some extent. Like I've, I've walked into a charitable flow group with, you know, a back end, a back end book of, you know, 20 million or 30. Like I've, I've had big numbers walking in and saying, okay, get what's your premium? What are you going to give me? Yeah. And then I know that there's this mystery black hole of charitable types that are going to be buying it at this premium price and then selling it to whoever I've lined up. Yeah. But I've never myself participated to offset anything with flow through. But after this conversation, I'm going to look at it. I don't even it. know. Well, we have a few good ideas for you, Denny and Castlewood. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, just not, not, sure not you do. time. But like... They have all these calculators and stuff. It's like impossible to keep track of. I, I just like, pay it. I'm an idiot. I just yeah. pay. Just pay. If you if you pay taxes, meant you did okay. So. Yeah, but I want to support the space, and I yeah. prefer to do this than just pay. Yeah. But I guess I'm just a, a soccer fan. <laughs> oh, but you know, given that there's barely any premiums on the sub twenty million market caps, and um, I think we're on the verge of a bull market in our space, um, the, you're almost getting these 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 companies at seed stock valuations. Jason, d- d- does Terra, uh, does your company Castlewoods, do they have a website? Yeah. So www.castlewoodcapital.ca. And, um, and yeah, we, uh, you don't just specialize in flow through your everything. No, yeah, there. we do, uh, oil and gas as well as, uh, life sciences. And, um, we try to find companies. You help people raise money, but we try to find companies that have a chance at terminal value. If we can't see, terminal value upon execution of the management's vision, then chances are, you know, we won't help you out. But if there is a obvious buyer for what you're trying to accomplish, uh, you know, and at the right valuation, we're happy to help. Uh, you how, out. how do you find your companies? Do you put them together or? You- um, uh, mostly there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of companies out there, sub 10 million market cap that, you know, that need help, but have merit that the, you know, there's companies out there, for example, like Copper Road has a three, four million dollar market cap, twenty one thousand hectare project. It's barbelled by two past producing copper mines, and uh, you know through good work in the field raised by flow through, they've identified a uh, a rift related porphyry at surface with a cluster of breccias surrounding it, and it was previously drilled in the '60s. And we know there's uh, economic grades of mineralization by today's standards, so. Um, there's good flow through opportunities out there and uh, you know, Castlewood's here to support, you know, companies that are too small for the can accords and the PIs. I'm going to make you pay for that plug. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but I'm just giving you, no, no, I'm just, no, I'm, just I'm, I'm just providing examples. Yeah. 20 pushes uh, later. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, no, I'm just trying to, pro- I'm just, I'm just trying to provide companies that don't have a spotlight on them, some capital to prove out what I think they might have. And, yeah. You know, look at Great Bear. Once upon a time, it was hard for Great Bear to raise money, and then they got taken out for $2 billion. So the dream is still alive. It's just you got to hunt for the right opportunities, and you got to be supportive. And sometimes it takes a few go-arounds in terms of financings to get these things off the ground. But, you know, as Denny knows with Newfound Gold, when they work, it's life-changing. Yeah. Well, you know, I hope that – I know it's been a really tough grind for people out there to raise capital. Um if you are an issuer and you're interested in raising flow through, if you're doing a finance, you need some help, give Jay a call. You know his website here, Castlewood Capital. Um, he'd be glad to help you. He's an awesome guy and he's a real hustler. He knows everybody and he's connected and and um, and Jason can really, really help you get going. So I, I hope your phone blows up uh, with uh, with interest after this um, or at some point down the road. With, yeah, no, thanks for – thank- I think he's getting uh, educated yeah. on flow through and then uh, figuring out about you. A dying breed in this sector, eh? The 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 boots on the ground, for sure. Kind of, 
Well, that's the opportunity here. A lot of people our age, you know, went into tech or became real estate brokers. And I was, you know, I became uh, a broker for essentially a lot of junior mining exploration companies. And uh, when the commodity prices go to much higher levels, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of market cap coming all our way. And I'm looking forward to participating in that upside. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I mean, I, I gave him a call to help out on a, we did a deal not too long ago. And, uh, and I gave Jason a call and he's like, okay, uh, what's your pitch? And so I gave him the pitch over the phone. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Next. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Calls me back like two days later. He's like, I got 600 grand from these guys. 300. I'm like, whoa, lock it in. <laughs> yeah. well, lock it. I didn't even have to pitch it. <laughs> Amazing. Well, he's like, give me the deck. Got it. Okay. See ya. I'll call you back. You know, guys like, like Denny yeah. Laviolette, you know, you obviously have to do your due diligence, but there's a track record there of execution and finding things. And so when you already know management, um, you know, you obviously always have to do some due diligence, but, um, you know, happy to support guys like Denny Laviolette. So. Thank do you. you. Uh, what, what do you think it's going to take for more newer blood to come into our sector? Greed. Like, Greed. Yeah? So you just have to wait for commodity prices Greed. to go up. and Greed. Greed, eh? Greed. Because, you know, gold, if you blindfolded me and told me, well, you've got a war with tanks on the edge of Europe. You have a, uh, a pandemic. You know, I close my eyes. I say, well, gold's probably $5,000 an ounce, you know? So, you know, gold has performed well and it's held up well, but we're still not through all-time highs definitively. And I think until we go through all-time highs, the greed level won't be there. But, you know, if we can break through what's the all-time high, 28, uh, what's the uh, 2180? Mm -hmm. or, or, or if we can break, or 2480, if we can break through all-time highs, then I think the greed level will kick up. And in a, highest, in a higher interest rate environment, real estate becomes a lot less attractive. So people are going to look for other spaces to invest in. And um, I think uh, I think the junior mining space is due for some love, especially in an environment with uh, stagflation and, uh, and you know, being in a bipolar, wor bipolar world here potentially. Um, so I think, I think in the junior mining space, all participants uh, stand to benefit. Mm. You know, it's funny that you use the word greed and, 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 uh, I was talking about this the other day and that was probably the one word that would have made it a lot easier to use and, and illustrate the point, but between, um, you know, cryptocurrencies and just foil, foiling the differences between sort of a bullish crypto market and, and, um, and sort of the safe haven, um, gold bug, you know, protect your wealth kind of narrative, which a lot of people were using for crypto. But the big differentiator is, is that no one was buying crypto to protect their wealth. People were buying it because they were greedy. Correct. They wanted to higher. make money. It was going higher. It's going higher. You can open up your wallet tomorrow and see yeah. it double, triple. But at least with, and so, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like that's what is missing is the greed on it. And at least with gold, you're, if you want to be greedy, you're buying into a space with regulation and the infrastructure already in place, right? True. You, yep. you already had you know, multiple blowups of companies and stuff and the reaction of the regulatory bodies putting protections in place. You're not going to have another BREX. You know, you it, know, it's just chicken and egg though, because yeah. you, you, you need like in order for people to, to pile in on the greed train, Yeah, you do need some sort of like outperformance. You need some sort of like, you know, you know, you know I what, don't know you what know, that is. What, what would really help the space, Denny? If we have please don't a, say discovery a bunch of great bears sort of take place, <laughs> oh, right? Like discovery, discovery. Well, sorry, there we've just hasn't them. been that. We, we we've had them, but the, the and, world you know, is not interested. They're not like, oh wow, look at those discoveries. I know. I used to saying the same thing. Jamie Levy came on, same thing. Yeah, it Everybody's needs, it needs to be thing. like a. Group like, of, but I you need like your neighbor them. to next door to have a big pass on something. You know, in the junior we've mining had space. Philo, yeah. We've had. The 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 PMAT. We've had newfound gold, great bear. We've had uh what else? Um like there's there's been a few yeah, heavy but you, hitters. But, yeah, but you've named half a dozen junior mining companies in a span of the last ten years. That's not that many. Yeah, but if we if we go to take the equivalency that that's what it takes to kick off a bull run, well, what did you have? You had like what um um you know, um uh we were talking about it, Aurelian, um Let's say Hemlo, uh, Gold Eagle. What's that? Gold, Gold Eagle. Eagle um, that big uranium deal. What was that big uranium deal that all the uranium guys made? Everybody made uranium money. One? No, uranium One? Paladin. 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 Yeah. 
So I don't know. I don't know if that's what the if that's the thing is well, that or is that just like an after well, effect? Let's, is, that, let's, is that the let's the go stimulus? look at well, let's go look at the lithium market over the last eighteen months. What got people so excited and what brought non traditional lithium investors to the space was that all the stocks were going up and that the big car manufacturers were looking at these things and making investments. Bingo. I think that's what it was. I think it was the big car manufacturers. It wasn't the PMET discovery. It wasn't no. Sigma. No. I mean, those happened, but it. I don't think it was those. Like People are like, oh, did you see that Sigma lithium deal? It went from like a discovery to insane or that PMET deal. It was kind of like... It was it was the General Motors saying that they're going downstream. Yeah. It was the Ford. Everyone's going to drive electric, and the car companies are concerned about supply. So it was an easy educational problem to to invest in. Yeah, people understand that space. You know, Simple. Part of the problem, as well as is, is sort of respectfully, the Barracks and the B twos and the Ignicos, because one, their share prices are okay, but they're not great. You know, you always need. The, the large caps to perf to perform very well, but you also need them to start making money, making money and buying juniors. Yeah, and and I, last time I looked at the Barrick balance sheet, they only had like fourteen years of reserves left. <laughs> they don't do so well for a group that's been struggling at fucking eleven hundred dollars gold to a group that struggles at fourteen hundred to sixteen hundred to nineteen hundred. And it almost doesn't matter what the goddamn environment is; they all suck. And now they're sinking like eight billion dollars into Pakistan and. I have no beef with Pakistan at all, but you know, there's a lot of red tape. There's all types of different sorts of groups you have to do business with to get that up and running. So they're taking a lot of chance on jurisdiction when, you know, in my opinion, the United States and 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 Canada, you know, are ripe with new discoveries, like a newfound gold, a new discovery. So I think um as junior mining sort of uh cash or capital allocators, we have to find new discoveries and uh and and maybe Maybe they will, maybe they'll take a chance on us one of these days. These big, uh, these big producers, because right now they're going abroad. Um, right, you know, there's, you know, we have a lot. We're 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 well endowed here in in Canada, and um, you know, I think they're better off making big capital investments in Canada than they would be in Pakistan. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I don't know. It's weird. And and then there has been a lot of expiration. We often say we don't credit the major companies with expiration and discovery, but there has been a lot, particularly in Eastern Europe. Um, the Nubian Shield as well and in, uh, in uh, Northeast Africa, Ethiopia, Arturia. There was a lot of spending by major companies doing grassroots type programs, which is really bizarre. Uh, poor free hunting. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say what's going to be. It's uh, to me, it's all chicken and eggy shit. But it's hard to say what it's going to take. Like, is it? Does it take big funds, like the institutions themselves, saying like central banks have already started buying gold, right? We know that. Like that's been. It's like what last year was an all time record yeah. for gold and silver. And it's mostly Everything. in the eastern part of the world. Not even in North America. Well, yeah, you have the, but it's still you, happening. It's happening course. for sure. And, and so like, okay, well, that was a big signal fire. It was like, as soon as the central banks start getting on the buy, then, you know, surely gold's going to go to 5,000. And well, that's been happening. So that, you know, X that off the old crystal ball list. And then it was like, well, you know, inflation, if inflation goes insane, well, that already happened. If banks collapses, well, that already happens. I mean, like, let's go down the list. And then, you know, discoveries. Well, we had some discoveries. I don't know. That's not doing it. We you will know, see a zero to three billions. We will see a flurry of buying of juniors at some point from the majors, because if they have no or reserves, then they're out of business. They're in the business of mining. So at some point in time, their reserves are dwindling. They have to come into the market and buy juniors. Ever since the last cycle, they cut money on expiration spending. And at some point in time, they're going to run out of reserves. And hopefully the juniors do a good job at proving out uh, deposits. And yeah. hopefully I'm a shareholder of yeah. some of those. And, <laughs> well, and yeah. hopefully... Uh, what what you know. do you think is the <laughs> next junior? <laughs> Sorry? Who's the next junior to get taken out? Um, well... Should I give Newfound Gold a plug? Uh, no, you can't choose Newfound Gold. We talk <laughs> about it way too much. We can't, on, yeah, on Newfound Gold gets way too much of yeah. time. We and have a Newfound another, Gold uh, jar now. Every time you say it, you have to. Put, to uh, well, that's yeah. a, another push up. That's yeah. a tough. That's a tough one. Um, you know, it depends on the jurisdiction, but you know, I'm, I'm, any jurisdiction. I think I think Nevada is a really hot jurisdiction. Mm. You know, you mm. saw you saw Centera buy Goldfields. You know, you saw Anglo go and buy Corvus. Um, so I think new discoveries in Nevada. Um, We'll get a 
we'll get a premium. Like, look at the success. Nevada call. King. Nevada King. Look at Nevada King. Dollar in the jar. <laughs> Is that the same jar? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Nevada King. No, but yeah, you know, um, obviously this is a bit of a plug, but you know, I'm excited about a company called Athena Gold. They have obviously cool. early days, but they have three high grade discovery holes at 40 meter depths. Um, you know, they drilled six grams over 27 meters, 15 grams over 11 meters, four and a half grams over 15 meters. And what's the market cap now, Athena? 11 million. And, uh, and in the next couple of weeks, they'll be out drilling and try to prove 200 meters of strike of those type of grades. And if they're successful at doing that, um, who's running that Jay? So there's a gentleman, uh, out of Montana named John power. And, uh, he used to run small cap funds down in the U S and him, uh, he hooked up with Dave Beeling former CEO of Bullfrog and Dave Beeling thought the property was very prospective after he That's sold it to uh, Richard August. Work. Yeah, August. Yeah, he That's sold not... it to Richard Work at Augusta. And uh, on their first program, they had a discovery hole, which was five grams over th- over 33 meters. Um, and uh, it's a hell of a hole. The goal was well distributed. It started near surface and it's a genuine new discovery. And they have to see if there's any continuity. But this is gold the world has never seen before at shallow depths. Let's throw Athena on the old list. Throw Athena on the old list. That's a good, sounds like a good one to do a review on. Jay, this uh, CEO.ca crash labs board, we ask people to submit things and they always submit the same things. Um, That's a good one. That sounds like a fun one to dive into. So about, you know, they just raised a million dollars a couple of uh, months ago and they're doing RC drilling. And you can get a lot done with, with RC drilling down in the... Is that all they have is a million bucks or do they have more? Uh, it's just a million bucks. It's one of those things where they're hoping that their results are, are going to drive market attention. And Got it. And, you know, look at look at Collective. You know, they're getting good results in Columbia. Obviously, they're, they're well cashed up, but, you know, Nevada is a better jurisdiction. It's not enough, though. A million bucks. You can get, with RC, you can get more 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 distance with it, but I feel like a million bucks. You're do or die. Yeah, that's really hard. But, you know... This is a company that already has a few discovery holes. And it's 2024 almost. It's just, I feel like a million to $3 million was like a 20, not 2008, 2009 thing yeah. where like drilling was half the price. And but you know, were, there's you know, a whole community of companies out the there and, 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 and it's a philosophy thing, Denny, but there's a whole community of, of small caps out there that, you know, there's very large shareholders and, they're, they're mindful of dilution, and they want, and, they, yeah. and, and they're kind of hopeful that a few drill holes will get the market's attention and allow them to raise money at much higher prices that they're in at. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but if you're an owner of these things and you buy it in the market and you don't have seed stock, you know you care about dilution. And CEOs are mindful of dilution because they want to keep their shareholders happy. Totally, and I understand yeah. that. I understand the the, the principle. And that, that, that thought process, it's just my process is like, well, if you spend a million dollars on drilling your property, um, let's say it's this property, it's like, well, we already can agree. Can we agree that a million dollars is not a lot of money? Correct. And you'd likely, we're going to need to spend You'll almost all You'll be back all, to the well. You'll be you back almost need to spend all of it, if not all of it, to be able to generate a, catala- a catalyst of, of merit to enable you to unlock that next level, oh. unlock that next tier of thing. So then you know with all certainty that you're going back to the well. For sure. Right? The market knows with all certainty that you're going back to the well too. So why would they start buying your stock and driving you up to newfound heights? Well, it comes back. And, new, and, and, and newly, you know what I mean? Like that next tier of pricing when they know full well you're going to go right back to the well to raise money. So they're going to say, well, I'll just wait. Like if, it, if comes you back hit- to, it comes back to greed. And, right. And if, 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 if online, obviously – on Twitter, people are excited about 200 meters of strike of high grade in Nevada. Sure. Not everybody has access to private placements. So there's a lot of investors that have to buy stock on the board. Mm-hmm. And and it's those investors that drive up share prices or hopefully drive up share prices upon good results. So not everybody has the option of calling their broker and being able to participate in the next private placement. Fair enough. But flawed logic though, in the sense that, that if you feel like there's a sense of urgency that would require some form of sense of urgency to go out and buy the stock today because of what could be depending the next 200 meters beyond that 200 meters that could be possibly unlocked. And it's but, like, but, well, but w- if I'm going to miss the boat on this deal, but we're, we're also in, they have it, to pose a threat. Any, we're also in the business that we drill and we spend money on these properties to add value to these properties, to make these properties more valuable. For sure. 
So obviously, most exploration companies haven't raised their their final dollar. They'll be coming. Every junior mining company will be coming back to the well at some point. Um, obviously, some will be coming sooner rather than others. But if you're going to be a junior mining investor, you you have to have the mindset that good results will result in higher share prices. And if you don't believe in that, then why are you playing the sport? And I get it. Having more cash in the till is is always better, but hopefully good results obviously move the needle. Because if good results don't move the needle, then you know there's other places to to you know to put your risk capital. For me, for me, it's like if you if you if you if you had like let's say four million and you take two of it and you get those good results, then there's another two in the chamber to get even more good results. And so I'm like, okay, well I got to own it now because there's a threat of them spending that last two. And doubling up what they just found. Mm. For sure. And then I'm like, oh shit. So I better own it. And also, I'm actually going to buy it. And then they're actually going to see their share price increase versus if they only had a million and they spent all of the million and then they don't have, there's not a reason to buy anymore. They all, I know they're a hundred percent next move is to raise money. So I'm going, okay, I'll just wait for them to raise money. For sure. But think about this. Some companies have more expensive drill program than others based on jurisdiction. Like if you're drilling in the ring of fire, it's like $800 a meter. Mm -hmm. right? If you're drilling in Nevada, RC, probably somewhere between like 75 bucks, probably 75 bucks. So if you, if you're a Nevada exploration company with a million dollars in the till and, uh, you know, you're not blowing it on salaries and most of it's no, going you can into get the distance ground, out of a million. you can actually get yeah. probably two, two work programs out of it. Yeah. You can get distance out of a million mm -hmm. bucks in Nevada. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. And, that, and I, but. you know, the companies that I try to get involved in, I, I like when the management think like owners. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one of the, obviously a bigger raise results in more fees for brokers like me, but you know, I want my investors that I bring in to do well. And I want man the management companies I'm marrying them off to, to look after them and be mindful of dilution. Well, let's, let's have a look at Athena and maybe we can mud, mud wrestle management and do a financing if, uh, if we like what we see. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right, we're back and uh, with Jason, and we're going to go through Athena Gold. Now, this is interesting. Jay's here. We'll put him in the hot seat. We're going to go through it really quickly. Um, for everyone here, we we decided that's probably the best uh, thing to do, just having Jason in here. And the fact that even, yeah, the elevator pitch is very interesting. So let's go. Um, Athena Gold, Steph, market cap, $11.57 million. Um, it, uh, it's got $136 million shares out. So the 136 million shares is is tighter than meets the eye. Okay. So 55 million shares are held by uh, by Nubian Resources. Okay. And roughly, roughly another 50 million is held by the CEO and the lar largest individual shareholder. That's that's not. A, that's oh, so idea. is this um, our friend Marty? Marty? Marty Shell? No. So Marty Marty is the CEO of Nubian. Right. And Nubian owns 55 million shares of the. I think what did it say? 136 million shares out. How did Marty get involved? So he actually had the project. Oh, so this is Marty's Nevada project yeah. spun out of Nubian. Correct. Well, it wasn't an official spin out. There was another pubco called Athena Silver. Okay. And Athena Silver, like I said earlier in the podcast, um, you know, had an affinity for Dave Beeling, and Dave Beeling had just sold Bullfrog to Richard Wark, and he had identified this property as interesting because a Cisco in the last cycle had drilled holes on it, uh, but you know, never drilled holes of the magnitude that Athena's currently getting high grade. So is this the Athena that Gunner was involved in? I, I don't believe so. This was mainly That's... an OTC listing for many, many years and just recently uh, got a dual listing on the CSC, the Exchange for Entrepreneurs. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you're, you're, plug, you're plugging okay. companies in left and right right now so. <laughs> yes for entrepreneurs okay i like it i like it Excelsior. hey you know what it says it on their website if you actually go on the csc <laughs> okay. website it doesn't yeah. say for it entrepreneurs the exchange yeah. it does okay it does, uh, yeah. awesome yeah. it's uh, yeah. okay. it used to be the canvas Perfect. exchange where they, they <laughs> the, the beautiful one <laughs> okay so it's, it's obviously it's in the it's in a good part of town um it's it's just north of bd where uh, Bullfrog is and Corvus is and Anglo is. Um, and it's also right near Goldfields that Sentara bought. Uh, yeah, it's in the Walker Lane. Yeah, which, yeah, uh, which, which I think is an underexplored. I, I actually like Walker Lane. There's a yeah. lot of high-grade splashy stuff in the Walker Lane, but yeah. you know, I, I actually do like that um, yeah. that belt. Yeah. So. In Nevada? Okay, so here we are. And uh, we're going through this. Um, so Evolving Gold uh, had it. Uh, 
and uh, and the geologist at the time there was Quinton. Right. So Quinton had done some exploration on the property. Uh, shout out to Quinton and um, a Cisco had done some 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 work on the property as well. So we're we're using all these companies data to okay so evolving came in which was quentin gave it a kiss osisco came in gave it a little kissy poo and now you guys and 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 and, and osisco didn't walk away because the property didn't have merits it's just the market kind of got soft and uh the the company motto was to focus on malartic yeah for sure and uh yeah especially in that time frame 2011 2015 so these are some of the historical drill holes on the property yeah these are great lots of sniffs for sure and uh so is this what came out of, so go back to those drill hole results for two seconds. So is that significant high grade, uh, grades in historic drill holes? Does this involve the uh, the drilling that Athena did as well? No. These are just the-, the These are the historics historic leading holes. up to yeah. that point. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Understood. Okay. So effectively what happened is the majority of the historical holes were drilled due north and Athena's um, think tank had the idea to drill due south. And that's when they started getting the better intercepts. Hmm. Uh, okay. So historically, the past operators that came in and gave it a kiss, drilled it to the north, and these guys have turned around and drilled to the south. And they're having success. And they're having success. Gotcha. Now, um, new drill targets. So the red the red star is, is the discovery zone. The red star is the discovery and there, zone. And there was limited drilling in and around that discovery zone. The western zone. slope zone. As, as you can see a bit to the left, there's some patented ground where there was a historic mine called the Buster Mine in the 1800s, mm. where the old timers just sort of built the shaft and went in there and took what they could. Which is cool part about Walker Lane is that there is a lot of these older, high-grade kind yeah. of shafts and things. A lot of people don't realize that N- Nevada's exploration landscape uh, has had changed dramatically in the point in the 1970s and the 1980s with the no CMs. And so what ended up happening, when, we, when I say no, no CMs, I mean Carlin style. What we, what we would refer to today as... Tr- typical oxide carlin style mineralization this had to do with like finding very low grade uh mineralization over very broad footprints very big things you know and um and then the inkeem heap leach technology right and they figured out that that they could dig up all of this low grade dirt pile it up into heaps and then in the desert and then put sprinkler systems of cyanide solution um basically run like drip drip tubes over top of the layers and then have that cyanide percolate through the pile, collect in like a plastic kind of liner and then go through and then they would pull the gold out of the cyanide. So it's very cheap, very big bulk tonnage, but this, this overtook the Nevada landscape, which became, was really interesting because Nevada had a very rich history of mining, high grade underground things, which then became kind of a lost leader. They became a forgotten relic of the past. And so when you visit areas like Battle Mountain, like, um, like uh, the Walker Lane trend, things like this, you 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 then see these things that have been like 1800s right. or early 1900s. And, and, and what's also so down. amazing is when you go to Northern Ontario, it's covered with trees. You can't see anything. Yeah. You drive along the 95 highway in Nevada from Reno to Tonopah, and all you see is mounds with rhyolites sticking out of them. And, you know, if it's covered in trees, you can't see anything. But here, you know. No, you see it at all. See, you see yeah. it all. It's amazing. And the other thing that's interesting, too, is that back to the no and the big bulk tonnage, low-grade things, is that they've been relatively picked over. I mean, a lot of these things are gone now. They've been picked over. And so we have to go and look at some of these other projects. Mm. And, you know, quite frankly, a lot of these higher grades like higher grade splashier things actually do have value. They have a lot of merit. And that's what's so special about this is that obviously it's early days and there's only three discovery holes, but it's oxide and it starts at 40 meters depth and it's, it's high grade. It's, it's it's hundred gram meter holes. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay. Well, let's, uh, what, what are those, what are those holes look like? So here we have the Western slope discovery holes and um, let me just see here. So here's your thicknesses in number 23, 33 meters of, five grams gold and uh 8.9 grams silver so who cares about that um then you got 22 well actually that intercepts phenomenal but i, I mean i mean i'm more i'm more mean the silver uh and then so that was spring of 22 fall of 22 you've got uh well, let me see here 27 meters of six. six okay that's a hitter uh another 10 of Am I reading that right? No, Including so it's six ten. of 27. Oh, yeah. but, but you've got includes, 10 of 10. You've got then, 10 of 10. And then a little bit lower down the hole, 
Yeah. At 77 meters depth, we hit another close 13 to of five. Yeah, which is pretty Wow, cool. a second zone. Okay, got it. And then in uh, in number two, you've got 15 of four and a half. And then you've got another seven of a gram. Um, and all, and okay. all these holes were only drilled to about 100 meters. So we have not tested this to depth at all. Amazing. Okay, next. Those are great holes. Confusing slide, Jason. Confusing Talk to management. Slide. Okay, so here we go. So <laughs> Western Slope Discovery, there you go, to number 23. Um, we just looked at some of that. What was the other hole? So the, the other holes were 2201, 2202, and they were drilled from the same drill pad, but at different azimuths and okay, angles. Right. So so if you actually connect the mineralization from the from the farthest east hole to the farthest west hole, so holes essentially one and two, uh, we can connect 80 meters of mineralization at depth. Now, go back to that previous slide, please, Stefan. So that's the proposed drill plan is we think it's an east-west trending structure. Yeah. And we're going to step out systematically uh, every 100 feet or 30 meters for Canadian uh, viewers. And uh, we're going to see if we can demonstrate 200 meters of strike of similar grade. So, okay. So just I, I'm having a little trouble reading the scale bar, but I'm doing my best. 20 meters. Okay. So you're going to do 10, what is that? 20 meter, 25 30, meter, 30, 30, 30 meter roughly, steps, roughly 30 meters, yeah. 30 meter steps on either side. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do a similar fan, but with RC, uh, the original program was RC as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah okay. And, uh, and so you're going to step along it and, and sort of fence it off and play a bit of battleships on this and see if it's still there. Um, are you going to be able to achieve the entire program with the, uh, with the current, uh, cash in the treasury? Yeah. So, uh, we just raised a million dollars and, this program uh, would roughly cost 300 grand Canadian, uh, including assay lab results. So we have uh, money in the till for at least two programs. Wow. Okay, there you go. There's Denny's, uh, there you, go. you know, popping Denny's uh, not enough cash balloon. Um, okay, got it. Next. And so that's just a cross section. Um, that's just a cross section that was designed by the geologist. Yeah. Okay, so this is what you're saying. So, so here we can see. You, really what this tells you is the azimuth and the angles we drilled at, as well as the distribution of the mineralization. It's not nuggety. Like you get consistently gold throughout. Obviously you get some higher grade shots, but it's, it's, it's pretty consistent throughout. Now, this is something that a lot of people may or may not um, care about, but these are not massive. Like on that first fan of holes, you know, as you're saying, there's maybe what, 30 meter separation be between, um, between the sort of 20, 20, 2201 and DB23. There's 20 meters at surface, but then because of the azimuth and the angles, it, 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 once like you on get to, section. Once, yeah, once you get to depth, it's it's 80 meters between. Oh, uh, it's 80 meters between those two things. Yeah. And then and then what's the separation between uh, 2202 and DB23? Oh, so 10 meters on each side. So okay. We, so we stepped out east. You know, it was one discovery hole, and uh, we didn't exactly know in which direction it was going. Mm -hmm. So. To for, you know, to do a three point problem, you know, we did very modest step outs, and now we think we understand it. So, so a lot of people listening will look at this and say, "What the hell?" But we did the exact same thing with Newfound Gold, exactly the same thing. Sometimes you got to choke up on it. You got to go tight. You got to go tight like that to figure out what you're doing, where it's going. If you get too crazy, things like this can get away from you, mm -hmm. right? Now, hopefully, if this is of size and significance, that's not going to be a problem. Right, like it won't get away from you in that that much of a hurry. But we're dealing with something that's very high grade, that can be a little bit shooty, that can be nuanced, and still matter quite a bit. And so, but you still definitely want to choke up on that. So I'm really happy to see that approach being taken. Although I do understand that some people look at a cross section like this and go, ah, it's all in the sort of same spot. It's like, yeah, but that's a figure it out spot, and that's a really good way to do it um, to be able to 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 follow up appropriately after that. So. It's, I, I always advise people, choke up, figure it out, then you do your step outs. When you get comfortable, then you can start stepping out 30, 50 so, meters. So we think the mineralization is controlled by the limestone. Yeah. And the limestone uh, trends east-west along the property boundaries, which is about two and a half kilometers. So, you know, thinking blue sky, we're, you know, we're, we're hopeful. We have uh, a very long strike length, but, um, you know, we're going to start slow. And uh, hopefully it leads us to a very big strike length. Mm, I see that. So you, it looks like you have some sort of a reductive environment, maybe beneath that limestone, um, siltstone interface. Is that kind of the idea is that you've got these little traps and nooks inside underneath there? Like are we treating this almost like a capstone with the limestone? Yeah. The so, like so, like so obviously I don't want to, you know, textbook, not every deposit, you know, all these deposits, none of them really fit into the textbook models, but 
we think that this is potentially intrusion related. Yep. And uh, it's not your typical epithermal deposit in uh, Nevada. So um, obviously still early days. It's all speculation, but we're going to follow the gold. And luckily enough, the, actually the discovery hole is right along the road that runs through the property. On the eastern part of the property, there's a cell tower. Mm -hmm. So there's a road that's maintained all year round. So um, and so happens we hit the discovery hole right by the road. So, um, yeah, we're going to we're, we're going to drill along the road and and hopefully the mining gods uh, keep being good to us. Good. Okay, keep going. Shorter line right here or something. Okay, next. So, Jason, when do you think uh, first assay is out? For well, you need to drill it first, yeah. but um, the Flip company it. the company will go drilling here in the next couple of weeks, which will be announced. And um, you know, in Nevada, the the labs are a lot better than in Ontario. Yeah. So, you know, they're they in, in in Americans are good when it comes to customer service. So. <laughs> You know, we're expecting results, you know, turn around in six weeks. But actually, in the field, we're going to have a good indication of what we have, which is a bit different than most. You've got the XRS equation. on the chip. Well, we have XRF, and it doesn't track the gold or the silver, but it tracks the elevated base metals. And wherever we got elevated base metals in previous programs, we got the high-grade gold. So we'll have an idea of if, 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 if we're in the right rocks. So you zap your chips, and then, and then you're going to send it off for assay, yeah. and then see where, see where you go. Okay, so John Power, Marcus Hanser, John Hintler, and Ty Minnick. That's your team. Now, next, keep going. So you've got the team. We got David, David Belling. Belling from. Okay, he was the former CEO of Bullfrog Gold, and we have got George it. Mannard, who's uh, co. Uh, you know, he, he's he's credited with the Luvicore discovery as well as the Kiana Deep discovery. Okay, keep going. Uh, cap structure, keep going. So it's pretty like between management and Nuvi, and it it is. Uh, yeah, the flow would only be about 50 million shares. Okay. So it is relatively tight. Nice. Okay, well, look at, I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, um, you've got drilling on the horizon. <laughs> it's going to be a significant, um, it's going to tell a fairly significant story if you've got something here or you don't. You know, you know? a lot of, you know, ex exploration is not for everybody. It's not for the faint of heart, but we already have three holes into it and uh, we're not, we're not going to cowboy it and step out 300 meters. We're going to do modest step outs and, um, we're going to follow the gold. Now, is there another system? And maybe, I, I mean, obviously you're not a geologist, Jay, so it's un maybe un a little unfair if, to if ask it, you, but. If you go back to the slide, uh, that slide, perfect. You'll see an IP anomaly at the edge of the survey. Yeah. And that's never been tested. Now, is there another system in the locale that is a significant mm -hmm. mine that's also constrained by the same well, geological features? Um, you know, to be honest with you, most of the deposits in Nevada are not intrusive and we think it's intrusive related. So it's kind of its own little beast. Um, but we think it potentially Debatable. it started off as sulfides and then got oxidized mm. and it's, but uh, possibly where you get that magenta, um, you know, the sulfides were never oxidized. Why do you think like the, the discovery holes are good holes? Like in, in, in no matter what jurisdiction mm -hmm. you pull out a hole like that, you're going to get some eyeballs. Why, why do you think the stock hasn't moved? Um, I think obviously it's tough markets. Yes, yeah, bad markets. And I think in and the, the three holes relatively. It's three of. holes that were relatively close to each other, mm -hmm. and the market wants to see more along strike, yeah. and uh, and so point. and in a better gold market or in a better sort of <clears throat> greedier market. I know I always come back to term greed, but in a greedier market, you know that would have got more attention. But yeah. I think so. This is a show me market. Do you think the step outs yeah. are gonna be enough then? Fuck, they can. Well, they can be. Let me. Yeah, yeah two hundred. If we can prove out two hundred meters of strike of similar grade, um, I think uh, we'll get a lot of attention from the street. So I think this program is a, can be an inflection point for the company. Sure. Cool. Fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, sure. it certainly can be, and I think, I mean, it's 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 going to be really interesting to see what that drilling comes up with. If you get that continuity going across, also understanding a little bit more about the system. I'm personally going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on the geology of this, um, what the controls are, if I can find anything else in the region that has, you know, something similar. Actually, this is one of the few 43101s. That's actually a good read. Right, yeah. This is I actually a really good so. read. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a, I'll have a peruse through that for sure. And just to sort of see what's... Uh, the 4301s what's on the website. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's great. And, uh, and the ticker is a T H a on the CSE and, uh, a H N R on the OTC. Okay. Perfect. So anybody listening that uh, wants to get in front of, uh, the up and coming drill results, 
um, you know, and possibly play this story. I mean, again, uh, we don't know what we're talking about. Um, don't invest on anything we say uh, or listen to us in any sort of way. Uh, do your own homework and uh, your own due diligence and, and good luck and God speed you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Obviously, this is a great initiative. We're trying to spread the gospel that is junior mining to a, a newer audience. And uh, and I think this is a great medium to get the message out there. So thanks for having me on, gentlemen. Good. Well, thank awesome. you very, very much, Jay, for coming on. We learned a lot today. Um, you know, it's this, all this stuff is pretty transformative. What's happening in the flow through world, charitable flow through world. And although it could be dry for some, it certainly wasn't for us. And I hope it, it isn't for the listener. And, and I mean, you really did, re did a really good job making, uh, breaking that down for us. So thank you again for coming in. I hope you come back. Awesome. I'll happy to come back when, whenever you'll have me. Awesome. <laughs> cool, Thanks, Jason. Thanks, right. man. See you guys.